Thank you for the wallet. Have a nice flight. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Wally Funk. I'm an air safety investigator for the National Transportation Safety Board. As far as I'm concerned, a good pre-flight may save many lives. And a pre-flight starts right here at the office. We have our log books, our aircraft and maintenance log books. We can check the weather by telephone. And we have our checklist for the aircraft. But one of the essential things that we should check is how do we feel? Are we mentally and physically ready for this flight? Have you been on any kind of medication? Or did you have a hoop de law party last night where we might have just a little bit of alcohol still in our blood? We want to check everything on ourselves as well as in the office before we go out to the aircraft. a good place to stop and just look over our aircraft. We want to be sure with the clipboard that we do have the right aircraft, and it is November 8372 Mike. And this is a good time to really stop and look at the aircraft. Are the wings completely level? One is not drooping. We don't have any damage to either the wing tips or the leading edge of the wing. And we have no dings from perhaps a passing car or aircraft. So let's go ahead and walk on out and check the rest of the aircraft. Now as we go a little closer with the appropriate equipment in hand, the step ladder to check the gas and the rag to check the oil and a uh, sediment drainer to check the fuel strainer. Now we'll continue our pre-flight in the cockpit itself. We'll take the key out of the uh, clipboard here and place it up on the dash. Now we'll take the control lock off of the controls, checking to see if we have freedom of the elevators and the ailerons. Placing the control lock into the pouch. Now I like to start from the left side of the cockpit and work right. Starting here with the paperwork, we have the airworthiness certificate, the registration certificate, and the weight and balance, as well as our handbook for this airplane. And the most important thing is that the numbers correspond on all the paperwork with the number of the aircraft. This is pretty essential. Now we start across to see that all our uh, electrical panel is in the off position, coming down, seeing that our cal flaps are open, and our fuel is in the both position or for both tanks. Now, we can turn on our master switch, which will give us a fuel indication, not only to believe, but to check also when we get outside to see if they correspond. At this point, let's drop our flaps. We want to check our flaps from the outside as well as the inside. Then, turning off the master switch because we need no longer to have any of our electrical equipment on. Then, we will go to the outside of the aircraft. We want to start our inspection at one spot and end up at the same spot. This is our static vent. We want to be sure that the little hole is clear. The cooling vent for our radio and electrical equipment, which is clear. And we want to check the oil on the dipstick. We do this by putting the dipstick all the way in and bringing the dipstick out and reading it on the indicator. We have 10 quarts, which is plenty for this aircraft. Now it's time to drain the fuel strainer. And what we want to look for here is clarity of our gas. We have the correct color for 80 octane is pink. We have no sediment or water bubbles in the bottom. And then we can just dispose of it. We want to be sure to close up our access door. It is locked. And then come to our other access door where we would put oil in if we were to need more oil. Also check for oil, rags, and any tools or anything that should not be in the top part of our engine. Okay, we've checked the back side of our propeller. Now we want to check the leading edge of our propeller on both sides to see that we have no nicks or cracks in the propeller. We also want to regard the propeller as always being hot. We don't want to twirl it through. Just leave the propeller the way it is. Let's check to see that we don't have any rags or bird's nests in the cooling area for the engine and the cylinders. On both sides, we do have an oil cooler here, but we still have cooling that goes to the back side of the cylinders. 
And here we have our carburetor filter. We want to be sure that it is clean, no bugs and oil. And down to our lights, see that they are intact. At this point, we want to check our exhaust back to see that it's absolutely top. Then we want to check our cow flaps to see that they are tight. And then come to the strut. We would want to have at least three fingers between the collars see if there's plenty of air in the strut itself, then come down to the self-locking nuts and on down to the uh, inflation of the tires. Okay, we want to check again for our torpedo uh, static vent. Then come along and see that we have no nicks or dents or cracks in our strut. And let's go up on top and check our fuel. We'll have to use the screwdriver to open up the fuel tank. And instead of using a pencil or a ruler, let's stick our finger in. It is attached to our arm, and we can't drop it in. So we want to see that we do have the proper color of fuel. It's pink in color, and it smells like fuel, not kerosene or water. Now, it's very important that we put this lid back on to the tank we do create lift as we're flying, and if this cap was loose, we could lose all our fuel out the back and run out of fuel. Now, while we're up, let's take a cursory inspection of wingtip to wingtip, looking for popped rivets, ribs that might be sticking up, or any kind of wrinkling that might have occurred in some other time. So this is a good time to look on the top of our wing to see that everything is perfectly safe and airworthy. Okay, we're going to leave the ladder here for a few seconds while we finish this wing. And let's untie the restraining rope. As we walk the length of our leading edge of the wing, we want to check for any dents or cracks or nicks in case somebody may have run into us sometime along the line while we were parked. Checking our lenses for uh, cracks and any water that might be in the lenses itself. And just ever so gently, moving the wing up and down, checking for any very loud, obvious creaking sounds. Then coming along into the trailing edge of the wing and the aileron. It's very important for safety's sake to see that our ailerons move freely. If this one goes down, the other one has to go up. Also, we have three piano hinges that are flanked by cotter keys. And we want to be sure that they're always in place so that there is no tearing away possibility. Now we want to check the inside of our flap. The roller bars are in position. They're not tied up. We do have linkage arm movement, and our roller bars here are in position. Then we can come to the drain of the right wing. We want to check for the clarity. I do see some water developing and some sand. So if that's the case in the bottom here, we want to try it again until we run out of all water and sediment. The reason why, we could have some engine malfunction or engine stoppage if we were allowing anything foreign to go through the lines to the engine. Then we come down to the uh, landing gear itself. We want to check the wheel pants for any cracks and also for the inflation of the tire while we're removing the chocks. At the end of our pre-flight, we should pull the aircraft out five to 10 feet, checking each wheel for baldness and cracking. Okay, we want to check underneath the belly of the aircraft. We want to look for any popped rivets or any damage that the aircraft might have incurred when somebody taxied over a runway light or something of the such. Also, what is very important is to look for any oil streaks which could indicate an engine problem and could be looked at immediately. Then we move back to the tail section. In checking your empennage, you want to check your elevator for movability. It should be able to give with the cables back and forth. Also, the sim tab, which has its own little cotter key. Then we go on to your rudder. We have three hinges that are fixed by three bolts on both sides checking to see that they are in their proper position. We have our tail light, which is not broken. Now, if we're flying in any kind of bad or foul weather, it might behoove you to check for ice and snow that might have packed itself in the tail section. Okay, let's undo the tail rope at this point. And a 
thorough inspection would be conducted on the left side of the aircraft, just as we have demonstrated on the right side of the aircraft. However, we're going to go up to the leading edge of the left wing and show you some extra points that were not on the right wing. Okay, let's undo our third and last rope. And on this aircraft, we have three additional features on this left wing. However, you might want to check your handbook on the aircraft that you're flying for these features. One is the, your gas vent, which should be positioned for ram air to go into the valve, not turn backwards because we might have fuel starvation to the engine. Then we have what we call a stall warner, and you could have this sound. This, if we did not have the stall warner indicator, we could get the aircraft into a stall and not be pre-warned in the cockpit. Then we come to our electrical heated peacock tube. The reason we're checking the hole is to see that it is clear. We have no uh, foreign materials such as a spider building its nest. We don't want to blow into the peacock tube, but just see that it is clear. And we have completed our pre-flight inspection by ending up here at the static vent. We only get to do a pre-flight once, so we want it to be thorough. And as an investigator, I have seen many accidents as a result of very poorly planned pre-flights. If you find anything at all that is not up to your standard on your aircraft as you're making your pre-flight, don't go another step further. Go to the next maintenance man that you can find and have the problem looked at. We all want to fly very safely, and by doing a correct pre-flight, we will have many happy, safe hours.